If today's guest was born in the ninth century, he probably would have invaded your village on horseback. But <laughs> luckily for you and your fellow villager, all he does now is invade rucks. Evan, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Have you ever been teed up like that before? No, this is the best. Okay. Ever. You got Viking energy. <laughs> My dad, like, he, he solidly believes we have some Viking blood somewhere in us i don't know and i'm not going to do the effort to go look for it but like i think that makes him sleep better at night so that's what he tells himself and tells me a lot you gotta love dads <laughs> chloe marvel welcome to the show as well Thank so we you. didn't um not a viking but uh well a, a person yeah true. <laughs> have, have you ever heard of evan almighty oh, i've watched the movie it's steve carell isn't yes. it yes <laughs> he's like basically noah yes yeah <laughs> I love so, it. not only do you come from Viking heritage, but biblical one too. It's through these hardships that you became a Springbok. <laughs> <laughs> it's always so funny. We, you, our first Springbok. Yeah. They usually don't come. Yeah, we send emails and we don't get a response. <laughs> That's you guys met me in person. You guys. I know we we <laughs> embedded. Good. Rumor has it that you had watched Kets, though, before this. Oh, a lot, actually. So you heard it here first. Evan Roos, fan of Kets. <laughs> the number one. No, Not the I, drug, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, would you ever look into ketamine sort of post-training? Mm, no. No. I feel that's, oh, that's a very English thing, drugs. <laughs> yes. I've heard about a few Afrikaans guys who do some lines, but it's not very popular in no. Afrikaans yeah. culture. More heavily alcohol abuse. <laughs> brown <laughs> brown yeah, brown it's Lippies more in line. With, Coke. That's oh, more in line with the culture. I love a clippies and coke, I must say. Whenever we whenever I go out with my friends, I always order clippies and coke and they're always so surprised. It's it's sweet. Like brandy is obviously very sweet, but it it's too it, that and the coke it's too much. Too much? No, I I don't drink brandy unless I'm forced to, but if I have my own choice just drink whiskey or something what a liar if you hear if you're just listening to the <laughs> podcast and you hear clinkles that's uh even necking a brandy at 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and if you're watching that's pure vodka so, <laughs> you have to take the edge off because you know whilst you do a lot of media it's still kind of weird to constantly pop up on these things and you know be this persona because you're a rugby player yeah um Funniest is when I go gym or something and like one of our matches play in the post-match interview <laughs> comes and I'm sitting there on the bench and then I can see the guy next to me like looks and he's like, <laughs> he nods like, that's you, like, yeah, that's me. You see, if I was a Springbok, which I'm not, obviously, um, I would just hang around in all these male-dominated places. Just, just for affirmation, like gyms, bars, because you go shopping at the waterfront, you might... You might turn a few male heads, or female, <laughs> single and ready for a good time. And to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> good heavens, this is... The, can you do video on Tinder or is that Bumble? I've been out of I the... I think you can do audio on Bumble. I love those voice notes that people record. Oh, really? Yeah. No, it's hilarious. Mm. I don't think anyone would believe it's you, though. Hayana I wouldn't use... I'm more the old-fashioned type of meet someone. Meet DMs, someone. Instagram mm. DMs. That is an interesting topic. Or like DMs, it's kind of, it's a bit, it, people, you can shoot your shot now mm. much easier and, and than in the past, but I still feel it's quite, I don't know, like I, I, I refrain from sending the DM first. Do girls DM you? <laughs> <laughs> Giggles. <laughs> Giggles and positive DMs. <laughs> ah, what, who's that? Um, uh, he played for the Lions. Uh, Rhys Zammett. My word, people were going crazy for him when yeah. he was here. Is he Welsh? Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. He's yeah, he's cool. Yeah, I actually played against him. Um, it's his cool. He was really? he played in the Wales squad. Yeah, I, I oh, played wow. against him. And then I um, actually got him in the week of Bloom. I went for coffee or something. I actually bumped into him. And then, yeah, we had a nice coffee and stuff. So, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a nice, nice guy. Nice guy. He's yeah. fast as well. No, he's very quick. You see, Chloe doesn't know, watch rugby and she knows this guy's fast. No, he's quick. Yeah, he's real quick. But I think it's always good to start at the beginning because we've said on many times here at Kets, it's art, you know, guns. Guns. For, for, our, <laughs> for our Afrikaans viewers um, tuning in for the first time ever. <laughs> we actually have quite a lot of Afrikaans guests. It's quite yes, weird. Franz we, we, we went through a phase where we had like a ton of Afrikaans guests. And then Bizarre. 
the TikToks that it's become very African. Not that that was a bad thing. N- not bad. Got to get everyone, get all audiences. Yeah, we want to get everyone. But yeah. where did you grow up? Because it's interesting to wh- where was the start. I've been everywhere. It's it's bad. Um, <laughs> we know from <laughs> those Instagram DMs. <laughs> no. um, born in Pretoria, and then we actually lived in Durban for three years. My dad um, got a job there, and then my sister was born there, and then we moved back to Pretoria, and we lived there for twelve years. Okay. I was in a then primary school, two years in office in high school, and then middle twenty fifteen, my dad told us, "Listen, there's a." big job offer an opportunity in Cape Town and um, I'm going to take it obviously and because um, my parents always wanted to move to Cape Town okay we um, have holiday in Hermanus every year and stuff so my mom grew up every December in Hermanus and stuff so it's kind of always something they wanted to do and then yeah I moved here 2016 and then I was here till after matric and then two years in Durban the Sharks mm. and then I came back 2020 one and now you found your way onto the cat set yes <laughs> All this is usually i was supposed to say this is this is when the downward trajectory starts <laughs> so um oh, oh boy what, but that's okay. very interesting i yep. was gonna ask what what was it i'm very curious what was it like living in durban because uh, durban sucks it's the i enjoyed the people i worked with obviously when i was at the sharks like there was really good people and like friends and stuff mm. um but yeah, Durban, if I can put it in a nutshell, it's very laid back. It's like time goes by so much slower there. It's weird. <laughs> like it's really like people aren't rushed at all. Or like being on time is not a big thing there. Mm. And um, it's very clicky. I don't know how to explain. Mm. Like especially if you're uh, this Afrikaans rugby player, they don't want to yeah. mingle with you. People actually. from Durban are, are fucking weird. It's, <laughs> no, I, think, I think you can always be like, that person's bizarre, they're probably from Durban. And it usually goes, then they're like exceptionally cool bizarre or like bathroom bizarre. Yeah, not that's, yeah not ba- fun. Bathroom bizarre. Isn't that a maybe. place where you buy things? Maybe. For, I don't know. Yeah. Do you, Bed, bath and beyond, maybe. But that's, I like bathroom bizarre. That's, Maybe that's we should. Cool I, word. That's <laughs> like a cool. <laughs> I've I've also heard that you had a nickname which was like Starfelbr. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Where does that First of all, is that how you say it? I'm not knocking you. I uh, genuinely that know. Was my that's it. Yeah, no, that, that's, Starfelbr. Yeah, that's actually. Thank you. Um, I try. What I, yeah, I, <laughs> like? Yeah, when was that? When I was 12 years old. Yeah, um, under 12 Craven Week. I yeah, believe. like you play like these the blue bulls. I'm not 12. You know the blue bulls is like. Donut and stuff. Like, <laughs> they're very physical and confrontational. Um, and I don't know. Uh, my one coach, I still talk to him like every second day. Um, he was a coach at my school as well. He gave me that nickname, but I'm struggling to remember why that nickname. Like I don't know where it came from. I think it was like an inside joke between the coaches yeah. or something. But what what does it translate to? Steel factory or literally? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we know <laughs> <laughs> because when we're obviously looking around these things and you know what are we going to chat about? What nicknames, past history, lovers on the down low. Um, we find like this hilarious thing where like you eight years old and the deputy vice principal is like that guy is going to tackle people dead and you're like <laughs> and you're like no <laughs> and this is why my kids will play hockey <laughs> that's and like you said that's that sort of like south african mentality and so for me i love sports all sorts of sports but like when i come from my like a sort of high performance culture and cricket and hockey and you're like there's no ways the stra- strategy is just to fuck them up physically but if it's ingrained in you since you're like eight years old yeah. Of course, yeah. it makes sense. So I don't know. I find it quite terrifying. Chloe, do you, what do you think about women's rugby? Let's get political. What do we think about women's rugby? Yeah. Love it. Oh, I was about to. You were watching it the other day on TV. You said you said this shouldn't happen. Andrew Tate would hate this. <laughs> no. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> I follow this. I forget her name, but she played in the Olympics. This female rugby player, and I love her TikTok. Memorable She's player. Just, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love this so much. Uh, no, I couldn't. Okay, maybe if it comes to me, I'll say. But I actually, I mean, I don't really watch rugby full stop. I'll be honest. Mm. Not a lot of people do. We've got videos of Chloe falling asleep while the Springboks are playing, and I just like, be, I'm like, this is treason. To, <laughs> should I break up with her? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I also fall asleep during F1. 
So there's just something about the commentary and the, you know, a Sundays, you know, you've just eaten a big lunch, you know. People always like feel so like they always say, sorry, I don't watch like rugby and stuff. And they always feel like they always like apologize. I'm like, I don't really don't care if you don't watch it. You don't watch it. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's actually a hilarious thing. Imagine you go, yeah, I'm an accountant. Oh, sorry. I I I don't get numbers. They're not like. Okay. You'd just be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You should have done. Like you do yeah. you. There was, there was a dad who came up to um, Sam like a couple of weeks ago at like a schoolboy rugby event. And, you know, he said to about his son is a big fan. He called him up and he said, yeah, I don't know about him watching your podcast. Like, <laughs> this is confusing. What? No. <laughs> What's going on? You don't have to watch it. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm not go- we're not going to make him a school shooter. This <laughs> is not like a weird. Like a weird, yeah. Yeah, we're just like conspiracy theories but i've got a conspiracy theory about your youth because the tabloids say you wanted to be a rapper you like to break dance you like to get down and dirty you also wanted to be a security guard oh, so now goodness. becoming a springbok you might you must be like you know you haven't really made it in life you failed you've missed your goals your family must be very disappointed in you how do you respond to that honestly i don't know where you guys get this but it's <laughs> such cool stories to tell um the reason why i wanted to become a security guard is the state I lived in the security guards were so nice and polite and they played like soccer with me and they would like if I drive my bike to school they would like drive with me on their bikes it was like they were like very like homey and like yeah and um they were nice people and obviously eight years old like you don't think about like the financial yes. things of being anyone guard. older than you is your hero yeah. yeah and um so they were so nice that's why I think that doesn't look bad you're out on a bike whole day and you <laughs> play ball so why not become a security guard and, and a rapper I don't know if I watched like some like TV show or like if Eminem just came on the scene or something yeah. but so, oh the Steers are where we love they had the you remember, it's VHS the like that music like Trace and the yes, 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 yes yes and um, I think I saw like the rappers there I was like oh, they look quite cool <laughs> they look cool. I could do this and this is easy my parents like sitting there and like these children were saying they want to become politicians and lawyers doctors <laughs> neurosurgeons um all these like fancy things and they're like I wonder what Yvan said <laughs> what he wants to be in there no security guard and a rapper and they were just like you know I'd love a, a security guard rapper yeah, yeah. I would love to see that and they were like uh, at least he's not lying because they do not believe these people want to become neurosurgeons yeah. these little five year old children so. shame and the, the one kid in your class who probably is like I'm going to become a springbok is probably a tukop now <laughs> <laughs> And now you're the Springbok, and he's like, I won. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, it's not fair. You want to be a rapper and a yeah, security guard. Yeah. I wanted to be the Springbok. Yeah. Now I'm rapping for Tuck. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever, did you ever record? Because I think every, Yo. certainly every young white person in South Africa, for some reason. I, I mean, think, not me. Yeah. Well, young white male. Sure. Um, I think it's because we're so like dislocated in terms of identity because we come from like, you know, very fragmented backgrounds, you know, there's the sort of colonial history in South Africa. So you don't like the English, but your ancestry probably is English or Dutch, you know, that mm, sort of yeah, stuff, yeah. but you don't identify with. It. So you're trying to find your way in the world and you naturally gravitate to wanting to become a rapper as you've experienced. <laughs> yeah. So of did course, you household. <laughs> An Afrikaans rapper. Watch out. Who's, who's currently... Jack Perro. Jack Perro. <laughs> Peach from Platin. He's currently... I love from Platin. Gabriel still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, oh, those yeah. are my, like... This is what, those are my songs. Like, this is your warm-up yeah. for Pratin. <laughs> Pratin. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> oh, I would love to be on that. That's very funny. So we'll send this to them. We'll clip it and send it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but what I wanted to know is, do you have a mixtape? Or do you have any recordings of your rapping? Unfortunately not. That's I don't know so far. I, no, I promise you. Find that hard to believe. We must charge up Sam's old laptop because that is where he recorded his mixtape. And he was 18 when he did this. No, I wasn't 18. <laughs> I was maybe 12, probably 16, 17. No. It was, probably 18, yeah. It what, was so how does bad. the beginning go? It, it's so bad. It's like, you know, it's, it's honestly like one of the lines is like, you know, sipping Hennessy. With my bitches. Yeah, like with, <laughs> and you're just like, holy shit, how did this, how did this happen? How did we get Get ya. So, you know, maybe I should train you become a security guard because it ain't working out. But we've also got some controversial questions mm. because you've obviously been, you've attended two of the biggest Afrikaans rugby schools in the country, which kind of extend to being the two biggest sports schools in the world. So is 
Paul Boys, the best rugby school in the country. Yes. It is. You heard it here first. <laughs> it is. And why? Um, well, obviously, with, with if you go four years unbeaten in South Africa, it's quite a achievement. Mm. But it's bad because I was part of the group that, like, lost, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, the first time on South Africa soil in four years. But um, we want into schools, so that's all that counts. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, ugh, no, it's... People always ask me, like, oh, which is better, office or boys are. Um, I just always, well, for me, I see it as I got to be part of an amazing boys' school and then another one. Yes, mm. that's so, true. Based on both worlds. Yeah. Afi's right now is on a great um, cricket tear in terms mm. of um, Proteas, or as you say in Pretoria, Proteas. Um, Proteas. <laughs> That's the one we have, like, that person from Victoria. It's that different yeah. at the end there. <laughs> Pretty there we go. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it's... We drove through Paul, uh, I think it was two weeks after into schools, and it was, like, the biggest hangover of a, you know, mm. event possible, like the McDonald's banner, last school, into school, you know, no, <laughs> across the street, people still staggering around, just like zombies. I can't believe something is that big. Apparently, it makes millions of rands. No, it's a, it's massive. Like the whole, the whole town is like it's into schools and it's boys eye, girls eye versus Belgium, and your face is on cakes and cupcakes, and <laughs> it's 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 bad. Um, but it's insane. But yeah, the hangover. Like I, I wasn't there. I was in Alsprey. Um, it was the week before. Just being a springbok. <laughs> <laughs> and it was me and Thomas, who's also an old boy. We like, literally sat there with a beer in the team room. I was too alone watching on a projector. <laughs> and all my friends are calling me, are you watching this? Are you watching this? And I was like, put my phone off. Like, I don't want this because I had such FOMO. Yes. Got to get flights uh, back. And it's obviously the admin from Nile to you. Yeah. yeah, down and yeah, flights yeah. being so expensive. So that's crazy. No, yeah. so here's a. I didn't even think about this, but because in America the college sports scene is completely unprofessional, mm. um, athletes don't get paid, and it's a massive talking point because you know you you do you're there studying, but you don't actually study because you're a professional sportsman that's not getting paid. Yeah. Do you think we're heading to a place in South African schoolboy rugby? where players actually start to get paid. And you'd argue that they might be already because of scholarships, but you hear about these things like, old Yanni got a high lux, and does it happen, or are we heading there? I've never, like, I've heard stories, but I've never, like, physically seen mm. some, some guy rock up with a bucky or, or something at school. Obviously, there's scholarships and stuff for, for guys who can't afford it, or just schools buying guys. Mm. Um, I know, like they buy a lot of players from Cape Town. A lot of Victoria schools in general buy a lot of Cape Townian players. Obviously, yes. they're good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it'll be like to the extent of like salaries and stuff. Yeah. But but it, it is quite professional. Can, can is. you imagine like what a seventeen year old would be spending their money on? Like mm, exactly. just like money that you don't even know what to do with. But I think with the rise of also like um, super sports schools mm. and the um, streaming, yeah, you know that's like that's super lucrative. It's just yeah. taken off. Yeah, it's, yeah. Now there's the same like talking point with the NCAA and the guy making money off these college students and there's all these endorsements stuff. They don't get anything. Don't get money, if it happens yeah. at school, it's kind of also like it's their royalties or like yeah. it's their image that they exactly. Use for. Yeah. yeah. So it's also yeah, it's very debatable. Yeah. yeah. It's it's touch and go. I don't know. There was. So, uh, because I've been involved in um, hockey quite, um, I just said quite high up. <laughs> yes, that's me. <laughs> um, the person you haven't seen at an AstroTurf near you. Um, no, and you ch- when you chat to, you go on tour or you go to schools and you chat to the headmasters, they're very anti-professional sport because they are like educators. And it was something we've spoken about him on the podcast before. Um, Lorenzo Julius at Vildeklava got something like 10,000 rand for the biggest hit. And yeah. as a schoolboy, like, fucking hell, that's <laughs> the coolest thing ever. But everyone around, it's like, we don't know if this is what should what the game should be about. Mm. That's bullshit. No, listen, because <laughs> I got like five, out of the matches in Curry Cup last year, I got zero, man. And the, for one tackle at school, you get 10,000 rand. No, all credit to... I think it was, was penalised for the tackle. That's well, awesome. Yeah. Like, well done for your 10,000 rand. I also want my money for other things, and I didn't get it. Terenzo, you heard it, yeah. Evan's coming for you. He's going <laughs> to fuck you up for that 10,000. Podcast <laughs> That's that Nate Diaz in the UFC. Conor McGregor, you're stealing everything I work for. 
<laughs> I want to fight your ass. So you're going to come for him? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the beef Oops. started. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, what does the number 924 mean to you? Massive. Massive, massive, massive. massive. Yeah. Not just because it's a big number. No, it's obviously a big number, but no, it's obviously... The first when I when they told me like your Springbok nine two four, I went on my phone notes Springbok yeah. nine two four. <laughs> it's like me running my credit card yeah, up and down. It's like, and just it. but it's like you don't have like I you can wake me up in the middle of the night. Springbok nine two four. Like it's such a yeah yeah it's insane. I it must have been so special that moment. Yeah, like people always ask me, were you nervous on the field and stuff? I was more emotional i wanted to cry on the way on the bus because you look out and these people yeah. are there brian and bloom like brian and it's brandy and it's flace and the kids are running around and they're like you, they can't you can't they can't see you from the outside but they're still like like cheering Going and stuff yeah. yeah and that's like that's means so much for these people and that's quite a emotional thing but when i jog in the field that's what i feel like and this is, i know what to do yeah like yeah i don't have to stress like this is i know how to do this other stuff like that's quite new to me, but this is like fine and, and I can yeah. do this. It's, it's amazing. And I think we, I think I chatted about it to you a couple of weeks ago is that because South Africa is so divided, everyone's in different niches. You can be in a celebrity, you can be a celebrity on a soapy. Only people who watch soapies know who you are, but mm. the spring box are like one of, and I mean, I also say it's all the time. It's like, it's too much pressure because it's like anything's load shedding. Fuck. Okay. The Springboks are playing. We win. <laughs> Woo! The yeah. country's fine. Win a world cup. Corruption for who? We're yeah. the best in the world. So the Springboks play, but you guys are larger than life celebrities. And how, how does that weigh on you? Are you, are you aware? Cause you're, you're a young guy. Um, coach Rossi and coach Shark actually talked about this. They said a lot of things on a country obviously don't work. None of it actually works. But the Springboks do work, and mm. it's something that should, like, we should cherish and keep on doing because that's kind of it brings the whole country together and yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's weird, like, obviously being young in the team as well. One of the young, me and Jaden, all the except for Kane and now he's younger, but youngest guys in the group. Yeah, it's quite a, it's weird, yeah, because some guys are married, got children. Yeah, some that's guys true. Are, and. I mean, like everyone has is either married or engaged or has like a long term girlfriend. The only two single guys are me and JC, so we just like sit together at each time or like chat to each other. <laughs> sit together going through yeah. the DMs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> all yeah. the guys are usually with their families or play golf and then yeah. me and him are like yeah. what now? My my dad, so my our family's like really not a big sport family, obviously. It's terrible. Um, I hate it's them. It's really bad. Like <laughs> it's in the like, prenup that we anyway. have to watch rugby. <laughs> 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 but you and also he's got like crazy theories about rugby. He's like, no, you know, you like what does he say? like you lick your thumb or something like that before you touch the ball and then people are getting like infected by the pesticides in the grass I don't know but he says to me yesterday he goes no but like no one over the age of 30 plays rugby like no one and I was like dad like have you seen the Springbok team yeah there are on. many people over the age of 30 like with kids he goes really <laughs> No, really? it's tough How? watching sports with them. And <laughs> hey, it's really this. Or you'll kick it. They say, oh, no, I just kicked it. I'm like, brace yourselves. There's going to be a lot more kicking. Yeah. <laughs> People don't understand. There is a reason behind it. Yeah. When it works, it works. So exactly. You just have to execute it properly. But yeah, like, people always come to me. Why are you guys kicking so much? Like, don't. I'm not. I'm back it. Yeah. Don't ask me. You're like, did you watch the game? How many times did I kick the ball, yeah. motherfucker? Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> I don't kick it. I run with it. So. This is not my strategy. And it's, also, it's all those, it's that thing because it's public. Everyone's got an opinion. Mm. Like no one comes to your, if you, you know, you're a chartered accountant. Like mm -hmm. your, your boss is in charge of you and that sort of stuff. But you don't have randoms coming like, ooh, missed out there today. Or you're like, yeah. oh, what an idiot. Can't believe you invested in that stock. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what your ex-wife says to you. Yeah. But in the Spring, if you play for the spring box or you're in a, or you're in a pub, public mm. platform, everyone feels very quick to give out their opinions on what you're doing wrong. Yeah, it's kind of like they have the, like they have this right to come up to you and tell you how to do things. And like, ugh, honestly, it comes with a turf and stuff, but it's, I enjoy the interactions for mm. sure. When did your beef with Dwayne from Merlin start? <laughs> on the record, there's no beef. Uh, always, when I do Dwayne from Merlin like, and Evan Russ are vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> like when I do things with super sport, I always cut this out when I tell, when I say, I really ex like respect them. <laughs> We're also going to cut it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and like, obviously I look up to him and like, 
the while I was with them now, like obviously asking a lot of questions, how to do things. He helps me with a lot of like small skills, things that yeah. like, and he's like, I grew up watching him and I've got a photo of him while I was like, I think nine or 10 years old. So they uh, like people always like come with me with this. I'm like, listen, there is no beef. Like mm-hmm. I really respect him. And he's like, he's yeah. still, he's still a hero of mine. But the, it's interesting that you say you look up to him because last time you ran into him, you were looking down. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right. So Dwayne, wherever All you right. are, You've joined the Gerenzo hit list. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be so cool uh, playing with people that you've looked up to for so long. Like, it, it, it must just be, I mean, like we said, I don't watch a lot of rugby. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even me, like I've, there's been, I remember, is it Percy? Was yeah. that his name? Your What's so that his name? So, no, no, <laughs> One no. Of the so, greatest so, so my dad and I, we did watch the Rugby World Cup that happened in, I think it was in 2007, mm-hmm. right? So I was seven. Mm. Um, but I had the biggest crush on Percy, right? And they had the big, you know, like double story bus that came down, waving at everyone. I promise you, this man, he made eye contact with me and he waved. And I was like, oh. <laughs> we're about to get together like little seven year old so I mean no there's also been like spring box that I've looked up to um, and it must just be so cool to be playing alongside them like what a dream come true it's yeah it's it's weird like when I was at the Stormers and like with France and, and Katsi Skara all those guys and even like someone who isn't he's two years old than me, but he was a year of mine at school when yes. he played first team and I was grade 10 but then like at one training session, uh, we were doing scrums and like it was literally Kitsi, Malcolm, France, and then Lewitt and Ivan in front of me and Pity and Sia. And I was like, it's it's kind of like, no, this isn't happening. It's weird. It's bizarre. It's, it's both and bizarre. Both. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Clip it. Put it in the pot. So Chloe mentioned it's a dream come true. And I think this is a interesting thing to chat about because... To achieve a lifelong dream at 22, I think that can have also quite negative effects on a person. Because how, how do you sort of deal with that moment? I guess what I'm do you are you in therapy? Do you, <laughs> have you been therapized? <laughs> Should more Springboks be in therapy? Um, so I have my support network. I have my family. Um, but if I have, um, I love this guy. His name is Vikas. He's literally um, he's a pastor. But he like he takes all these shoes when he preaches. It was the best thing. Like boys eyes also very like um like very stiff and stuff when it comes to religion and stuff. And he came to preach at our school and like he took off his shoes on stage and like all these old Afrikaans <laughs> teachers were like looking, what's this guy's doing? Like, what's this? <laughs> and um but um at school I like I saw him preach and I was like, This this guy is actually quite like he knows what he's saying. And then um, I, bought, I bumped into him in the gym. And um, I was like, listen, I need a guy to talk to. Do you want to be that guy? <laughs> like, it was very, it's like, yeah, yeah, let's go get, get coffee. And oh, like, awesome. to this day. And he, he bodyboards me and him go bodyboard. And he drinks wine with me. And he <laughs> he does, uh, he, he roasts coffee as well. He's, um, he does Peter Steffs uh, eight feet. Like, he roasts the, the okay. coffee oh, for them. Wow. So he's there in Paul. And um, yeah, so I try to see him if I'm in. In, in, in the Cape like once every two weeks or even once a week yeah wow. oh, that's awesome. and I've got good so friends lovely. as well yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I find that's quite hard personally in terms of religion and we, everyone has their sort of different uh, spiritual path that they walk in life but I, when I was younger growing up in a, like a sort of Catholic environment mm-hmm. it, you can't uh, connect to it at all so mm-hmm. if you're young and rebellious it's instantaneously too push against it whereas mm-hmm. like you said if Vickers, Vickers yeah if you've got someone who you think that's cool he's slightly different I can see myself in him and that sort of stuff that's very important okay Chloe you're, you're in therapy yes <laughs> <laughs> is your therapist barefoot as well bodyboarding I mean I don't know it's on zoom uh, he could be pantsless no I'm joking oh, 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 <laughs> one of those <laughs> sort of that's just my podcast <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> goodness gracious it, it's one of those things but, I always tell people to do, but haven't done. I'm like, yeah, you should go to therapy. Well, okay. And then they're like, do you go? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like yeah, therapy's a scam, but mm. also. <laughs> There's a wonderful quote by Oscar Wilde, and it's um, the, the only thing to do with advice is give it away. It's never of use to oneself. And I find I, I, I do that a lot. <laughs> if only we could just listen to ourselves and people like Vickers, we, we'd be on the straight and narrow. Get yourself a Vickers. I know. That's, I'm going to call it, I'm going to 
attack him at Musenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go bodyboarding? Um, the cool thing is, is this place. Um, it's is it Yersistian? It's nearby Malkbos, but it's a, like a nature reserve, so you need oh. a pass. Oh. And he has like fucking Springbok like elitist. Oh, the family pass. <laughs> so there's there's no one else there except yeah. me, him, and one of his bodyboarding mates. So it's like all these waves. It's just awesome. Fast. It was yeah. fantastic. It's Hopefully like, no like, sharks. Yo, that happened in Durban once. <laughs> Whilst was, playing for the sharks, attacked, attacked by a shark. Shocks, <laughs> attacked, almost. So <laughs> what happened was it was me and Karen from Fury and the the hooker there. He's been bodyboarding, a club bodyboarding, surfing since he was like five. Like he grew up on a surfboard, and then Henku Fenter. The guy from Bloom. Yeah, it doesn't sound like he's but surfed. He surfs. Oh, okay. he surfs. <laughs> but um, I think he's got a bit, bit of a bigger board than Karen, and I was on a bodyboard, which is also much more movable, and we saw Finn. And <gasps> I was out, luckily, like I was chilling on the on the on the grass, but the, those two were still in. And Karen told Ingo, "Listen, there's a shark here." He's eye. And I'm like, "Oh, fuck!" <laughs> 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 and um. Then um, like Kieran catches a wave, like the next wave catches and rides out him and then goes there, apparently he's not <laughs> catching waves and there's like the sets aren't going in and he's stuck there, he's like, oh fuck. The Kieran. bodyboarder from Bloom uh, yeah. about, <laughs> and, about uh, to be annihilated. And then luckily he caught a wave out and he literally surfed it onto the sand. Like, Jeez. Yeah, do, uh, do you think Henko's last thoughts would have been before like getting chomped by a shark whilst playing for the sharks? The irony. Yeah, literally. No. I th- <laughs> fuck. I've become obsessed with sharks. I can this tell you a lot about sharks because of Instagram. Oh, that's so all of the wheels. I, had to, I um, had to clean up my feed, you know. You click on a half-naked photo, then you see 50 half-naked photos uh, of women. And, and, and Chloe came down hard on me. Do so, not show this, so I'm not interested. Not interested. Not, so, so basically, I then was now logged onto the kids' account when I started on the podcast. So it's like I a joint post. account. Oh, yeah. But I was like, oh, interesting for you, Paige, <laughs> hey? Like, really yeah. said for Sam. But now it's just shark reels. Like that's because I've just gotten into these shark it's videos. Like that shark in, week in, is that like that's what it's like. But like I now know how to deflect a shark away from me. But I I, w- I won't be doing that anytime soon. I saw that. I saw Do you the see video, the- like this guy? This guy is swimming, and then the shark comes. You just. They like yeah. tap their nose yeah. or like whatever. Like, that looks too easy. No, yeah. Sam will be the Yours first. Yours is more like that. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Sit down, Dwayne yeah. slash Julius. <laughs> your pieces of shit. <laughs> But we've touched a bit on like obviously what's awesome about being a Springbok. But what is the worst part? Or are there any bad parts? You can be honest here. Yeah. No one's gonna watch. No, this. like obviously, Joking. like there's not <laughs> literally being a Springbok is like a coolest thing that's ever happened to me. But the like so now because I've got my best friends. Like um, I've got like if Senna's my best friends, but if they would like me and my friend just go for beer and stuff, especially like in the salon bar and stuff, it gets quite can't like sit and have a decent conversation yes mm. and I'd, I'd never say no to photos and stuff because like there has been like players when i was little who i asked for a photo and they told me no and i felt so shit about yeah. myself mm. so i'll never say no to a photo but it get kind of, it gets kind of too much mm. um but do, you, do you also find like it's this weird thing not maybe even you get a photo free evening but you're being watched so um you yeah, not, probably someone you don't like, hey, yeah, okay. you you know you don't want to become you don't want to go from you like uh, Evan Rose to Evan Duas overnight. So <laughs> the first time. Oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> Put your fingers down. <laughs> I worked on that for weeks, sculpting the words, wordplay, Afrikaans, English. Who am I? <laughs> Damn it! We cu- you know we put in all the Dwayne from Yell and Hate. Now we're actually going to make it. <laughs> no, that's that's good, and it also gets me thinking. Which Springbok do you think would naturally just be, become president or be a good president? It's an obvious answer. Bucky's. <laughs> He's awesome. He's like Imagine him. your president's name was Bucky's. Like, you can't argue. <laughs> Look at the inflation rate. Bucky's is here. Fuck. We've got to change it. What he says goes. <laughs> exactly. When Bucky's is here. For our English viewers, I, I don't know what that means either. <laughs> Something about talking. <laughs> but so, uh, uh, Khaleesi. Yeah, obviously. So, yeah, he's awesome. He's such a he's such a cool guy. Like, I don't know. Like, if you sit and chat to him, he's such a cool. And he's like, I met him the first time when I was 18 with ASO schools. He like gave me my jersey. And then he was still the Stormers and he gave me shit about going to the Sharks. And then he went to the Sharks. And I went to the Stormers <laughs> and I was like, listen, what's going on here? Like, 
whatever you wanted you stay yeah? but no it's um he's uh, yeah such an awesome guy and i love him like such a cool guy no he he, he seems it's like again it's you re- he's probably also the most abused springbok online uh just because i think he's become this larger than life person so anything he does will never be Enough. Good enough, yeah. It's a, you should have, you should have scored a try, and you know there was a, a fire in Nelspruit, but he didn't save that the, the kid from the flames. You know, and what? also didn't do a backflip while yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and like now he's married a, a, a white person as well. How could he? You know. <laughs> 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 yeah, Africa, I, I don't yeah. understand it at all. The DMs, you know, one day someone is going to progress out of your DMs <laughs> from the from the ashes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the seven I met in the DMs. But that was during COVID, and that True. felt that was end of the world energy. It was like, oh, a, thanks, Sam. Dice. Yeah, you no, got to cool, cool. find someone now, otherwise. Yeah. My 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 housemate Johnny Hubert Mayer. I was actually at his wedding the other day. We're obviously married the girl he met in COVID over DMs like he loves hunting and fishing and I think it's mutual obviously mutual follows and stuff and he saw this girl like likes to hunt fish farm and he just straight up sent a DM and I was in Cape Town he stayed in Durban and when I got back I was like listen I don't know if I want to like ask what's been going on because obviously not yeah. much because she was like oh no 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 like I met this girl and like I'm actually going to this weekend in Pretoria do you want to come with like he has he had a, like i think he had a, a company so we can use these passes to travel or whatever so yeah um he met his wife in covid they live in, they live in that's France awesome. now hey sammy you get out of here woman. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. you get out of here um so, so so what are you looking for say someone wanted to dm you what are you looking for <laughs> what am i looking for <sighs> honestly like Boobies. At least 10k followers. Big old boobies. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, like the person. Oh, oh. I thought you mean like the pickup line because I've had some yeah. crazy ones. Anything, yeah. I saw the one person just sent an emoji of a cat, and the next picture was, oh no, my cat got lost in your DMs. I was like, that's quite cringe. Like, anyway, like, no. did you reply? That's a naughty person. No, I don't. I don't reply <laughs> those. <laughs> no, I don't reply like those. Shame. No. Can't you just imagine this girl? She could have been on her her last straw. Yeah, fun. She could have been. That's a shit pickup line. That is a shit pickup line. That's like guys like sending you pictures of furniture and they'd be like, "Don't mind me, just moving into your DMs." And you're like, <coughs> "I think I've Get done out that here. before." You're being evicted. <laughs> That's your, I don't know, the old like online pickup line thing. I never caught on. So yeah. Like, okay. okay. So yeah. don't shoot your shot. See him in person. Annoy him with a camera, and who knows? I actually caught someone once, like standing somewhere. I don't know. And then it was like this table, and I was chatting with someone. And I saw someone with their phone. Like, Taking a video, and as soon as I made eye contact with him, and I was like, Ooh, got, got you. you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it's fine. It's amazing. So we like to um, have our guests, guests guess a quote. So if you can guess who this quote is from, then we'll give you a prize. If you can't guess who it's from, no prize. All right. Okay. <laughs> so here begins the quote. Fuck them up. And after you fuck them up, fuck them up some more. Damien, you are from fucking Strand. Who said that? <laughs> Go to <Rassi>. Chloe, <laughs> give him his prize. <laughs> I try to do it. For the, for the aspiring love barista. Yeah, apparently you love them beans. I love coffee. I've got my own machine. I can't do lots of art yet, but I'm, I'm busy on YouTube. Trying to learn. All right. S- Sam's also tempted latte art, but I just get angry. I now just make frothy coffees. <laughs> it's difficult because you need like an industrial coffee machine to mm. actually, like I have one, but the steamer is not like me and Thomas the toy. He's a, he's got his own coffee shop. We can sit for hours and just talk about coffee, coffee. and stuff. So yeah. I don't want to go into too much detail, but I'm, <laughs> I'm an aspiring barista. So that's the DM. <laughs> <laughs> My coffee beans made their way. <laughs> What Maybe that will work. Maybe. What are they doing here? <laughs> no, that I think was the most sort of viral moment from chasing the sun. Is that just Rossi Erasmus and them going boss? So when they start doing that, is it inspiring or you're like, come on guys, we've heard it before. Chuck in another swear word, <laughs> mix it up here. <laughs> it's it's like general lingo now. Yes, it's like part of like if you talk to fans, like we're obviously gonna fuck them up physically, like but it's still like they they talk about it a lot, like. South Africans like are used to like hardships and all times. So, like they've coached overseas and they couldn't get that out. Of, they coached in Ireland for uh, they coached Munster and they couldn't get that out of the players. Like 
to be mm, physical mm. and it's just kind of embedded in yeah. in us south africans um, oh yeah just to go to a bit of a dark place and just fuck them up yeah flipping out my uh, the the my dad he watches this stuff now and like he's the type of person he's fantastic like chats to anyone we, we're pretty similar and so he like he sees nick mallet at like a uh, woolworths or something and then it goes up and he like and just start speaking to him for an hour about rugby and the lingo and that's something that like nick said to him is that it's just become synonymous that it's 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 just part of the it's not even people on that's just how it's communicated yeah. no one goes oh we put in something on or it's like this is how we speak yeah. which yeah. i find interesting yeah because we also have those cameras now for super sports schools so you'll be doing like a team talk or whatever and you start swearing and then this camera comes around and you're like <gasps> Oh. Yeah. it's also a bit different for hockey I'm like fuck them up they're like no coach we were <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, how can I do that to my hockey community <laughs> wow guys yeah well <laughs> my, apolo- my apology <laughs> Though it could be, no, uh, okay. we also had cameras with, with the Stormers <laughs> and um, we have a bunch of interesting interesting people in our team like really who's the funniest guy at the Stormers me <laughs> <laughs> no no not at all no no um Zas, he's quite funny. And Ruan, there's two romances, Ruan and Siapello, <laughs> and me and JJ, the uh, Kotsa, the hooker. Oh, okay. And um, it's, a, it's, it's a battle of the bromances. <laughs> so, uh, they've, they've been there longer, so I think they have the lead, but you, yeah, JJ, you we've got the youth. This. We've got the youth, so I think we can pull it through. <laughs> a, a youthful bromance. Yes, and um, they are like... <laughs> off the games we go have a drink or something JJ's girlfriend just kind of accepts like she's gonna be third wheel like, and me and JJ are just gonna go just gonna go at it in the bathroom all night long that is <laughs> Chloe uh, wanted to ask you a question about going out because it's pretty topical yeah. and it's also interesting to to know I feel like I should ask the Stellenbosch equivalent because I was yes. gonna say when last did you go to Boogies but it should be when last did you go to Delapa Boogies matric actually what do you think of the Boogie Wonderland? That was really, really cool. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, we actually watched the Sharks versus like province uh, at Newlands. And then we went there afterwards. The boogies. That was quite cool. And the LARPA, I was there my second year last time. Um, I remember when I was like first year or second year when I would come to Cape Town for like if I've off or whatever. And then the, you always said, yeah, the older people. Oh, at the lo- uh, the lopper, yeah, I mean, at the <laughs> yeah. and and yeah. stuff, and we 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 in the lopper and catwalk and stuff. Now you don't even think about going to the lopper, like Akka is the place, yeah. Yeah. and now you think shit. Those first years probably think oh, old people, old bullies, yeah. old yeah. bullies at Akka. I mean, oh, you're only twenty two. No, it's yeah. bad. Apparently, I went to the Akka a couple of months ago. No memory. <laughs> <laughs> that tends to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, my <laughs> friend sold it. That tends yeah. to happen. When the brandy gets poured into uh, the, the Coke and stuff, you can see it starting to fight. You <laughs> like this chemical. Yeah, here, here comes here come my demons. <laughs> so I, th- I think I recently saw a video of this guy licking um, the Dilapa floor. Uh, but like he literally like it's a tongue and he like goes like forward like this. And his tongue is pitch black. Like pit, like. <sighs> I think I'd rather you send me into the shadow realm than lick. That's make uh, Samuel eat grass. That medical bull will be quite. It's not good. I yeah. I met the oh, no man. I was chatting to my friend. He's just lost his tooth, and <laughs> giggles. Just love his tooth. Um, uh, playing hockey, and that's the, <laughs> that's the pro- that's the problem with hockey. Like you're not going to get injured with the frequency of rugby, but when you get injured, it's bad because you got a stick in your face or something like yeah. that. And he had just gone off of his. Um, medical aid and was in, in between Ooh. like literally that week when oh, you're transitioning and, oh, sure. and you haven't you haven't once used your medical aid for anything then you get smacked in the face and now have to spend 80,000 rand for, for a tooth um, no because plastic oh, surgery yeah. the tooth now that's got to be ground down I was like so if you think you're having a cuck yeah yeah imagine just one baby like I'm 100k down from playing a sport that's supposed to be fun yeah that's terrible who are you with who's your health insurer Momentum. 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 You want to get on board with us? Get some more young momentum. <laughs> that, no, I mean, you have to be insured as a, as a rugby player. The Jackass documentary was so funny because someone asks oh, wow. Steve-O or Johnny mm-hmm. Knoxville, who's your insurer there? And like, because surely they don't insure you. You're like, jump it off. He's like, no, we just say we're in full entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they That's so fair. Like, if you're like a stuntman, or yeah. you essentially are. Yeah. In a sense, yeah, it's actually... And... 
yeah, insurance and stuff, obviously for, for younger people, is quite expensive because like car insurance, that's quite, if you're under 25, obviously buying yeah. a car, yeah. the insurance is, is, is terrible. Yeah. That's the funniest thing that's come out with all this sort of, the, like the misogynistic comments about women and women drivers. <laughs> and then like, women can't drive, ha ha ha, I'm so funny. And then the research comes out from these insurance companies that like the majority of accidents and claims are all from men. <laughs> so you're like, yeah, yeah well, yeah, yeah. okay. Your insurance is actually cheaper if you're a woman. Yeah. Just because this is, this is speaking. You see, a brandy will do that to you. But we're moving on to the newest segments of the show, and we're going to have this every time. It's called Roast Rugby. So wherever you're in the world, you're going to get a phone call, and you've got to find a green screen, a microphone, and some one-liners. Okay. All right, okay. So I just want... This is mainly what my dad wants to know, but <laughs> we've turned it into a segment. Roast Rugby. Rugby. With a K. Rugby. 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 So I just want a quick fire response on these questions in, your, in terms of your opinion. So your toughest opponent? Mm. Team or player? player. Willem Albert. Willem Albert, the bone collector. Oh boy. Worst ref? <laughs> Played or... Slacks, like, because well, obviously the who, South African answer is Bryce Lawrence. Bryce Lawrence, but who do you think is the worst ref in the world currently? It's a tough one because he refs you like next weekend. That's yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. I want to burn bridges. Refs are good people and deserve respect. Exactly. No, <laughs> um, no I'm going to stick with my Bryce Lawrence. Bryce Lawrence, that's fair. Your best coach? It's going to be between my coaches at the Stormers now and Shawnee Rasmus. And your rugby goat, the greatest of all time. Mm. Greatest of all time has to be. I want to go with Richie. I was about to say you're loose forward. You're gonna 100% <laughs> say Richie Moko. Sure. Okay, that's cool. Do you do you admire that sort of just his body of work or the way he also did it? You know, in terms of. You know, the, the breakdown, the rucks, they're so contentious. Everyone talks about them. They're like literally rugby shows that just talk about. Mm. <laughs> the rules that yeah. were made just because of him. Yeah. You know, I just think the kind of just he's the epitome of what a rugby player is. And it's just like hard as nails. And yeah, like just and work rate, like just to look up to someone like him. Mm. It's yeah. I love watching the, the sort of all blacks documentaries because i think from a cultural and rugby culture and team sports culture it's amazing what they've done and all those sort of sort of like small things like it, it, and this was from long ago like uh, sweep the shed clean the shed like you've got international rugby players who have played hundreds of caps after a big test match you're on top of the world you're the guys cleaning the change room mm. you're not waiting for someone to come and do it for you that's quite cool at uh, the spring box as well um Dwayne, like he runs that like he's very adamant on the bus, the bus is always spotless. The change room is always spotless mm. afterwards, and he's like, he takes charge and he makes sure it's like his responsibility. That's what he does, and it's quite, it's quite obviously cool to see like someone of that like value and experience and like yes. still try those small things. Yeah. yeah, no, that is lovely. Of course, it is easier to pick up things on the floor if you've just been knocked over by Evan Russ, but that's neither, that's neither here. <laughs> I love this Dwayne po promo we're going to be able to cut from this. There's, oh, yeah, there's going to be a call yeah. from Minaba. <laughs> what the fuck? Is, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> what is he doing? But so your mom plays a, a big role in your life. And I've been lucky to meet her. We had a lovely conversation. Lekker man, good person. And I think that's why everyone's so surprised when you find out that you're 22. Because you have been very well raised. That sounds condescending. No, I'm but like, like a year older than you. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get a load of those, eh? Chloe, adjustments will be made. A lot more bone in this tap. <laughs> in this oh, tap? When I tap myself. Oh, okay. Anyway. Fair but Chloe enough. wanted to ask a, a big question about your mom. No. Please ask. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Sam's put this in the script and I refuse. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm too curious now. No, um, so oh, I, I thought Chloe yeah, yeah. could do it. Yeah, yeah. No, you, basically, you we know. want to know, ha has anyone ever called your mama MILF? That's a big question. <laughs> Samuel. No, like my, a lot of my friends, like people obviously tell my mom, tell me my mom's um, 
attractive and stuff. I'm used to it. I remember when I joined, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I, when I started at Boys, I would never forget this. Um, it was I was under 16, yeah, and we were training and stuff. And obviously, just moved to Paul, and my mom like that hasn't made friends yet and stuff. So it's like, oh, let me just go watch the last bit of his rugby practice. And the coach there, we're talking, and he's like, Mana? <laughs> He's a sister, <laughs> and he's like dead serious. And I'm like, listen, that's my mom. It's my mom, buddy. And um, it's my mom. Yeah, no, it was like, and he's like, whoa, okay, 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 three, three boys. And then he's like, <laughs> he was so embarrassed. No, that's hilarious. That is no, I do so get it. Fun. I do get it. Yeah, <laughs> we were on a, a, rug, a rugby tour. Why am I pretending I play rugby now? We were on a cricket tour, and we also had one of the sort of hot moms in our team walking past, and the cricket coach is like. Fucking hell, who's that? I let her shit in my porridge. And so like, it's my mom, so fuck. And I'm like, why? That's the, 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 the part of the story. I let her shit in my porridge. It's like, it's way. so degrading. Like, yeah. shit, that's bad. I let her shit in my porridge. It's a beautiful way of saying someone's attractive. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> no, it is funny. No, because uh, I, I always tease about, I always also got teased about it because it's like, ah, oh, your mom. I'm like, that's... You'd rather your mom's a MILF than your mom's not a MILF. And so 50% of my mom's OnlyFans right now. No. The premium is like, <laughs> she sells art on it, okay? She sells art, but it's a great marketing campaign. But no. That's what a lot of OnlyFans people say, it's art. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Chloe, don't hate the player. True. True, yeah. true, true. Mm. Um, well. okay. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is. It's the um, best. But I also wanted to ask you, I saw a video of, it was during lockdown and obviously we did some crazy stuff during lockdown. Everyone became like aspiring marathon runners, um, you know, whatnot. But you became a barber. Mm, My Mm. little brother, obviously boredom struck and there's no school and he just wanted like a mullet or like a sick fade. (laughs) And the sharks were like, you've got to send like a hidden talent. And I told them, listen, my hidden talent is rugby. I don't have anything else. I can't sing. I can't play instruments. Yeah, it's my hidden talent. How about you give me some fucking game time? (laughs) (laughs) This talent's so hidden, you won't play me. A mixtape, come yeah, on! Oh goodness, like the, yeah, the shots are spring, like, Springbok rapper. Can you imagine what they like now? That they're like, "Fuck, he's good." Damn it! <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> oh, they were nice. Like me and the coach had a mutual understanding. Like I needed to be home and stuff. So it's no bad blood. Um, yes. But I'm um, no like the barber thing. Like I asked my parents, "Listen, what am I gonna do?" I don't know what to do. I was like, I was like, you can cut my hair. I was like, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. And um, because I didn't have anything else to do, like I can't mm. play instrument and stuff. I was like, let me just cut his hair. And he wanted like this mullet, so I just literally cut the hair here yeah, <laughs> and just left everything else. Oh, it was amazing. And my what? mom, there was like two days. My mom said, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and took the shaver, like gave him like a proper, proper cut. Haircut. No, that's cool. That's cool. So we, I wanted to ask because I always find it fascinating because you guys are just treated as meat you know what I mean like meat that must collide and make us happy on Saturday and you're so much more than that thank you <laughs> don't ever don't ever don't ever forget <laughs> but um, is there anything that say someone who maybe watches you but doesn't know you as a person would be surprised by mm. um I, I always bring this up and my friends always give me a shit but anytime I get opportunity I was, I was in a musical when I was in, in school All right, in grade 11 um, it was Cinderella it was at Girls High um, before could, you moved to Boys High <laughs> yeah before I did a little, little stint I don't know um, and the teacher came because we had economics at Girls High and Girls High had EGD at us so like obviously I love economics but it also wasn't too bad going to the to the girls school walking across and there's like coffee shop and everything so I, I'd like bunk the class off the economics the coffee shop have coffee <laughs> and um, she came to the class very obviously dramatic drama teacher we need we need boys for the and obviously everyone just knows me as this, this rugby guy I was like who wants to like, oh, yeah. I want to I was like what the fuck because this is a guy I'm doing and um I thought I can't sing, but I was like, I'll really give my best. I was like, no, that's all, that's all that you need. And um, I actually pulled in one of my friends, um, who's also he played rugby with me, to come with me. And um, after a while, they started advertising it as come watch the two first team rugby boys in the, in the musical. And it's not like, and I felt bad because like, the there were guys who could sing and stuff, and like girls who were like the Cinderella, like the, the main character, and like yeah. there was just no. 
Like nobody actually came for them. I felt so bad. I felt fucking like, hell! Imagine that. A turnout is a turnout. I mean. I've been training for years, and now this fucking rugby dude comes and like the star of the show. And he's just and I'm Thank running around you. and I'm like improv and I I, don't, I had like one line, and like we had four sold out nights. And oh the bad the, the the bad thing is like after night two. The teacher came to me and my friend is like, listen, turn it down because there's not like all the attention is on you two at the back <laughs> and not literally what's going on in the in the story. Wait, so what was your role? I was a soldier. <laughs> just just a soldier, soldier one. Not not, not like, even not even like <laughs> basically prince. like like a tree. Like yeah, yeah like I, I could have, but I was like literally I would stand in the background and like talk and fake talk. And then because <laughs> I can't make noise, like there's mics. Because well, what happened was obviously the the um the costumes like didn't fit yes because <laughs> it's usually not rugby guys who yeah. like do this kind of thing and um there was this one scene where you pick up someone or you like your arms move yeah you, oh we we like, we picked up the storyteller like the one ca- character um we picked it like a line arm thing <laughs> and the mics like hang everywhere and my i picked up and like it tore completely and i was like <laughs> And my friend Emil was with me, the rugby player. I was like, fuck Emil, they get scared. And the not mics picked it up. And like, everyone started laughing. I don't understand why. Yeah. And then they showed me the recording afterwards. Like, no, the mics picked it up. Like, and, fuck with them, yo. And people were getting what they, what they paid for. <laughs> no, that's great. Oh, well. So, I mean, that's fantastic because it's it's nice to see people doing other things. that You probably put a couple of people out of their theater dreams because they're like, <laughs> I could do it, but I was replaced by a behemoth. But, <laughs> I had one line. What was my line? Um, Fuck it, the meal. Yeah, yeah okay, so I'll go in I too. That was imp- a bit of my improv. Like, yeah. um, what was it? Um, I said something like, said it harder or said louder, yeah. like something. Like the storyteller was like announcing the the princess Cinderella coming in or something and I was like say it louder or something I see that's wild the, the, I only have one school play no it was like a public moment where I thought I was the funniest person it's probably sent me on my way where I think I can do these sort of things anyway but we Kyle Brown was uh-huh. uh, at Saks for a prize giving and I was the one of the head boys of the junior school and you start speaking and you're chatting and I, and I say it's uh, a great honor for Kyle Brown to be here instead of saying it's a great honor for, for us to have you here. Uh. And everyone starts laughing and I go, Damn, I'm just funny because that's not funny. <laughs> and then I start saying things and, like, and I'm like, and you know, he's in the sevens, but I think he's a 10. Or, you know, like, so, oh, yeah. and then you start doing the thing and afterwards, pe- and I thought it was like, oh, I'm just, a, and they're like, no, you fucked up your speech at the beginning. <laughs> People couldn't stop laughing from that. And then it was funnier on top of that, that I thought it was funny. And they're like, this fucking do us on stage here. So story of my life, um, just misreading public situations. Well, it's got you, yeah. So. Yeah, all the way. I, and that's what we love about, and we're happy to be doing guests again, because it's very hard just to constantly book people, talk to them, mm-hmm. and then produce two podcasts a week. Um, but the sort of interaction you have with a person and you meet new people and you just, it creates fantastic opportunities. So it's just a lovely thing to do. Danko. Danko. Danko means thank you. Mm. Yeah. That's also the other thing out of chasing the sun. I say dunk all the time and people look at me like, yeah, they like that. Anything else? <laughs> no. You got any other language? No, danko. <laughs> danko means yeah, yeah. danko. That's about it. Um, but I also saw something that you had considered hanging up the boots at the end of 2020. Mm, yes. Um, like, I went, I went to my agents and I was like, listen, um, obviously not enjoying it in Durban anymore. Um, Cause it sucks. Yeah, um, like, and I wasn't even like I was. St- I'm studying online, so there's not even like a like, go to varsity college and like see other people. Mm-hmm. And um, I told him, listen, I know because things at Province was kind of bad financially and stuff, and I didn't even think Dobba knew I was. Like, I don't think there's a chance of me going home. I would even like go just go study and maybe even just play for Marty's. Like, I just want to be home. And um, my agent said, listen, we're gonna give them our best shot and. Um, funny enough like it was on and off for like three four months and then eventually when i came to the storm it was on a loan for nine months but it can turn into a contract if they offer me something like i can stay if they offer me a contract in the first month so i had a month to, to prove it 
And I like I don't know why I didn't think of it that way, but like I didn't like think should I have a month? I was just so happy to be back home. Yeah. Like, oh shit, I'm back home. This is like a, <laughs> um, because my thinking was if I don't like, what if they want want be in of these nine months? I'm not going back to do it. And I was like, no, there's no way I'm going back. I don't want friends. This is there's no way. I'll just stop. Yeah. And whatever. And luckily, in the first month, um, they offered me a contract. But yeah, I was literally like wow. prepared to. Wow. So, so uh, how close would you say you were to literally quitting professional rugby? Um, there was a stage like in Durban after, like after the same holiday, like in January, February, where I was sitting in a coffee shop and I called the mom and says, "Listen, I'm thinking of not literally buying my own plane ticket. I'm coming home. Like I'm done. It's this over. Is, this oh. is not fun anymore." And um, then that was like the Monday, and then the Wednesday, my agent calls me saying, "Listen." pack your things you're flying tomorrow like, mm. and then like Fact, I had to that's like, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. organize and the people I lived with um, Dylan and Murray <laughs> I said tell them listen like, let's go for dinner and they're like no because Dylan <laughs> catches he does like sea kayaking and like catches fish off so he has like I think 700 kilograms of tuna in his freezer like he just makes tuna I'm like no oh, we have tuna <laughs> it's like no listen let's just go for dinner <laughs> like trust me and then I told him listen guys this is the and they're like obviously sad but happy for me and stuff yes. and um yeah i flew the thursday and then yeah the monday tuesday i did my medical disturbance and then the wednesday i started training with them and then yeah yeah so, so, wow. so. what a, what a difference a couple of days make yeah it's crazy like that and it's it's one of those things where it's like you or everyone experiences this, this it does it and i think that's what people forget when they speak about like spring it's a job like it's mm. your job it's what you're doing it's great that you get to live out your dream but it comes with the same anxieties of any sort of job security so it's yeah. when when you, everyone goes through this sort of stuff and it's crazy what can happen in a couple of days in a month in a year so you go from literally I'm thinking of hanging up my boots crying in a vida to <laughs> holy shit I've just run out to play against Wales I'm a springbok 9 to 4 and now I'm on kidsy toe sometimes it doesn't get better <laughs> It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. My word. This is funny cold. There's, it's also, it reminds me of, there, there's, there's all jerseys keep you warm, but only one makes you shiver. Oh, I was hoping to be more dramatic. This is why I've been going to gym, Evan. What do you think of these? What would you rate these out of 10? Give it a like seven. Yo, fuck, I'll take yo. that to the bank. I will take that. This, bit of a, this was a, like a, this, this was the coolest thing on, for me. The, the collar and like the grip when I saw first all these Just jerseys. in case, you know. Touch yeah. it, you might get jealous of the, my, <laughs> my ge- genetics. Um, <laughs> oh God. But no, it's, th- this was the OG, mm. you know, t- I think it has the World Cups on them. We must add another one to it. 1995, 2007, yeah. When was the other Percy. one, Chloe? <laughs> I don't know, just watch that. <laughs> so, yeah, soon. <laughs> but that's fantastic. We want to do one last part of the show. Um, it's called Overrated, Underrated. Oh, yeah. So, overrated is like, ah, underrated. Quite cool. There's needs been more some attention. confusion in the past. There has been confusion, mainly because I'm an idiot. But now we've, <laughs> Chloe sat me down. She had a long talk to me. So we're just gonna again. It's a quick fire. You say, you tell them if they're overrated or underrated, and you give a little a little reason why. Yeah. All right. So the first one is Nick White overrated or underrated? Obviously overrated. The fuck's wrong with that guy? That's the, the most embarrassing thing I've seen at rugby. Yeah. yeah. Would you give him a PK? <sighs> I can't say it on, yeah. on, on on air. But if I speak, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. This is also a very fun one. Um, is Bishops overrated or underrated? I say underrated because um, I know a few guys in Bishops and they actually black black oaks. So, okay, that's fair. Um, we- and the like took me... Do you want to answer? No. <laughs> well, mom, he told me to answer. Hello? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apologies. Um, <laughs> He took me, like, because he trained there quite a lot, because Dobbo, obviously, is from Bishops, and, like, took me through the hostels and yeah. everything. I was like, this is quite cool. Like, no wonder you said it was, I forgot Dobbo was from Bishops. <laughs> yeah. um, otherwise, you would have said, it's that, cuck. That is the most, uh, like, unbridled confidence I've ever seen in a 10-year-old, because he was from Bishops. Yeah. He goes, how's that you well, hey? Yeah, they, hey? they greet you, you like... You know, and you're not being good. And it's this little 10-year-old, and you, you it's... But, I mean, that's Bishops. Yeah. It's so I good. just want to show, I want to get your first time reaction. You may have seen it, you may not have. Um, so this is the bishop's captain before Bish Bosch. 
That's oh, that. okay. We're well, in the oh, background, I love you. He's actually, you know, like you watched Stop Trading yesterday. The, the when? Show. Oh. Yeah. I just love how he starts laughing. <laughs> no, he just starts, but like, it, it slips out. Like, I was, uh, our coach Stick the other day as well also said, Oh, look, I knew I was like fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sia starts laughing. And then, no, it, I love it. So I love but, when the guys slip but up. But the British don't care. Like, wasn't Rupert was showing us. Um, the is it, uh, the it is, under is it, 18. And he's no. like, yeah, it was like a fuck. No, sorry. Yeah, it was a fucking awesome game. And we just like fucking. And it's just like all the time. And you're yeah. like. I was like, you're the. I was like, wow, geez, that's a bit hectic. And I was like, they must have dicked the box, baby box. And I watched. I was like, oh, they lost. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't make sense. But like, and he goes, like, usually, like, they say, like, fuck. Like, oh, shit, sorry. Yeah, he's <laughs> And because um, um, Salman also after the one, um, well, after the final, he's like, this is, this is fucking amazing. Right? And like, he just, and, I, and I, was, I stood next to John and I saw him start laughing. And I was like, oh, this yeah. is brilliant. It is so cute, but it makes people, it, but it's like when you make people human, people like it. So yeah. it's like, no one goes, oh, uh, Steinhagen so badly behaved. He like wears his laugh and they're like, that's quite funny. It's, it's, <laughs> you're a person. It's good to see. Is... Evan Russ, overrated or underrated? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Because uh, um, it's me. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's me. Um, I, I, yeah, like you said earlier, I think people don't like see. They just see as a rugby player. Yeah. And um, give me shit about my hair and this and that. Like I've gotten so much like question, uh, questions. When you got your hair, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, listen, Sam as well. You see that? Oh, like people that tend like I don't know what the stigma around long hair on guys are. Like I honestly don't know. I have, I'm gonna have to cut it a bit because it's obviously like in training these past days I couldn't see a thing. Like it's yeah. everywhere. That's not good. But um. Like that's the weirdest thing. People always like, it's like, oh, what's going on when you cut your hair? Well, my dad, like, he hates long hair. Yeah, I th- it's, it's like, not even that long though. That's the thing. It's not even you that long. You can't even do a man. Back. But not even. But they have time. they have ideas. Like our parents have ideas from way back when it's like, you know, in the sixties. Like if you had tattoos, you were a sailor. If you have long hair, there was something. You know, it's it's yeah. bizarre. But we we we've, we've got to end it there because you know, like all good things, they they have to come to an end. Evan, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for yeah. coming on the show. This has been amazing. This has been very fun. Amazing. It's been fun. You know what to do. Don't follow him on Instagram. That means not actually do. But also just watch him when he plays rugby. That's the main thing. And send positive things. Not DMs. just like your hair is long. <laughs> send, send, send DMs. DMs. <laughs> send DMs. Shoot your shot. You never know. We could be at Evan's wedding in a year. It is entertaining. Please don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. We'll catch you on the flippity flip. Bye. bye to the bye no not thumbs up you have to do our things here when you come here there we go there we go bye bye, bye. <laughs>